from around the globe, it's theCUBE, with digital coverage of AWS reInvent 2020, sponsored by Intel, AWS, and our community partners. Everyone, welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of AWS reInvent Amazon Web Services annual conference. theCUBE is normally there in person this year. We can't be, it's a virtual event. This is theCUBE virtual, I'm your host of theCUBE, John Furrier. Trish Dam Kroger, VP of GM and GM of the High Performance Computing team at Intel is here on theCUBE. Intel, big part of theCUBE every year. Trish, thank you for coming on. We're remote, we can't be in person. Um, good to see you. Good to see you. I'm really impressed with reInvent has it grown from kind of a small show eight years ago to now kind of a bellwether. And, and every year it's the same story, more scale, more performance, lower prices. This is kind of the Intel cadence that we've seen of Intel over the years, but high performance computing, which has been around for a while, has gotten much more mainstream thinking because it's applying now to scale. So I want to get your thoughts and, and just set the table real quick. What does high performance computing mean these days from Intel and how does that relate to what people are experiencing. I mean, high performance computing, um, yes, it's been traditionally known as something that's, you know, in the in the labs, in the government, you know, not used um, widely, but high performance computing is truly just changing the world is what you can do. COVID is a great example of where they've taken high performance computing to speed up the um, discovery of drugs and vaccines for COVID-19. They use it every day, you know, whether it's making Pampers or Clorox boxes so they, uh, or those bottles so that they, when you drop them, they don't break, um, to designing airplanes and designing um, Caterpillar tractors. So it is pervasive throughout and um, sometimes people don't realize that high performance computing infrastructure is kind of that basics that you use whenever you need to do something with dense compute. So what's some examples of workloads? Can you just share, I mean, obviously Xeon processor, uh, we, we've covered that many times, but I mean, from a workload standpoint, what kind of workloads are high performance computing kind of related or uh, enabled or ideal for? Oh, that's out there. Right, yeah, the Xeon um, scalable processors are the foundation for high performance computing. If you look at what most people run high performance computing on, it's Xeon. And I think the, it's so broad. So if you look at seismic processing or molecular dynamics for the drug discovery type work, or if you think about um, open foam for fluid dynamics or, um, you know, different financial trade service, you know, um, frequency, fast frequency trading or low, I can't even think of that word, but anyway, <laughs> trading is very common using high performance computing. I mean, it's just used pervasively throughout. Yeah. Yeah, and, and you're seeing you're seeing the cloud cloudification of that. And I want to get your thoughts. The next question is, you know, it's not just Intel hardware. You mentioned Xeon, but HPC in AWS. We're here at reInvent. Can you share how that plays out? What's your what's your um, what's your take on that? Because it's not just hardware. Can you just take a minute to explain right. the relationship? Right, so we definitely have seen the growth of high performance computing in the cloud over the last couple of years. We've talked about this for you know, probably a decade. And we've definitely seen that shift. And with AWS, we have this wonderful partnership where Intel is not only bringing the hardware, like you say, the uh, Xeon scalable processors, but we're also having accelerators. And then on that whole software ecosystem the, where we work closely with our ISV and OSV partners. And we bring um, not only compilers but also analyzers in our full tool, tool suite. So people can move between an on-prem situation to a public cloud like AWS um, seamlessly. So talk about the developer impact, because obviously it's a learning show reinvent. There's a lot of developers here, obviously mainstream. You see, in, you know, obviously the, the born in the cloud, but now you know, you're seeing large scale enterprises and big businesses, you mentioned financial services from high frequency trading to oil and gas, every vertical has a need for cloud and, and what you should be traditionally on premises compute. So you have, you're kind of connecting those dots here with AWS. Um, what is some of the developer angle here? Because they're in the cloud too, they want to develop. How, do they, how does the developer 
um, engage with um, you guys on HPC and Amazon? Right. Well, there's a, there's a couple ways. I mean, I so we do work with some of our partners um, so that they can help move those workloads to the cloud. So an example is 69, which um, recently helped a customer successfully port a customized version of the in-car model for prediction across scales. So they chose the C59 18X large um, instance type because this is what really delivered the highest performance and the lowest price for compute ratio. Another great example is PKI, which is a partner out of the UK, has worked with our customers to implement AI in retail and other segments running on Intel instances of the EC2. So I think these are just, so you can have people help you migrate your workloads into the cloud. But then also one of the great things I would like to talk about is um, AWS has come out with the parallel cluster, which is an Intel select solution, which really helps um, ease that transition from on-prem to cloud. That's awesome. That, um, let's get into that parallel cluster. And you mentioned Intel select solution program. There's been some buzz on that. Could you take a minute to explain what that is? I mean, the HPC has a, a reputation of being hard <laughs> and the whole philosophy behind the Intel Select solution is to make it easier for our customers to run HPC workloads in the cloud or on-prem. And with the um, Intel Select solution, it's also about scaling your job across a large number of nodes. So we've made a, a significant investment into the full stack. So this is from the silicon level all the way up to the application level so that we ensure that your application runs best on Intel. And we bring together all the, everything that you need into basically it's a, a reference design. So it's a, a recipe where we've jointly created it with um, our ISV and OSV partners and our open source environment for all the different relevant workloads. And so Amazon Web Services is the first cloud service provider to actually verify a service such as Intel Select Solution. And this is, this is amazing because this truly means that somebody can say it works today on-prem and I know it will work exactly the same in AWS cloud. That's huge and I want to just call that out because I think it's worth uh, noting. You guys just don't throw this around like in the industry, like doing these kind of partnerships. Intel's been pretty hardcore on the quality. And so having a cloud service provider kind of go through this, I think it's really notable. You mentioned parallel cluster um, deal. What is, can you just tie that together? Because if I get this right, the Intel uh, select solution with the uh, cloud service provider, Amazon, is a, is, a, is a reference design for how to go on-premise or edge or wherever it is to cloud, in and out of cloud. How does this parallel cluster project fit into all this? Can you just unpack that a little bit? Right, so the parallel cluster, basically um, it's the parallel cluster Intel Select Solution and there's three instances that we're featuring with the Intel Xeon Scalable Processor, which gives you a variety of compute characteristics. So the, the Select Solution gives you the compute, the storage, the memory, the networking that you need. You know, it says the specifications for what you need to run um, an optimal way. And then AWS has allowed us to take some of the C5 or some of the instances and we are um, on three different in instances. So we're on the C5N instance, but that's for your compute optimized workload. We're on the M5 instance and that's really for a balanced between um, mm -hmm. higher memory per core ratio. And then you have your R5N instance at AWS that's really targeted for that memory intensive workloads. And so all of these are accessible within the single AWS parallel cluster environment. Um, and it's at scale and it's really your choosing of what you want to take and do. And then on top of that, the they are enabled with the next generation AWS Nitro yeah. system, which delivers a hundred gigabits of networking for the HPC workload. So yeah. that is huge for HPC. I was going to get to the Nitro, that was my, one of my top questions. Thanks for, okay. Thanks for clarifying that. You know, I'm old enough to remember the old days when you had the Intel inside the PC, a shell of a, a box and create all that great productivity value. 
But with cloud, it's almost like we're seeing that again. You just hit on some key points. You have, you know, this is HPC, it's like memory, you got storage, you got networking, you got compute. All these things kind of all kind of working together. If I get that right, you just kind of laid that out there. And it's not an Intel has to be Intel everything, you're Intel inside the cloud now and on premise, which is the 100%. edge. 100%. There is no on premise anymore. It's cloud operations if I get this right, because you're essentially bridging the two worlds with the chips. You're bringing on premise, which could be edge, a big edge or a small edge and in cloud. Is that right? I mean, this is kind of where this is going. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I mean, what I think about, so a lot of um, the usages for HPC in the cloud is burst capacity. Most HPC centers are 100%, not 100% because they have to do maintenance, but 95% utilized. So there is no more space. And so when you have a need yeah. to do a larger run or you need to um, you know, have something done quickly, you burst to the cloud. That's just yeah. what you need to do now. I mean, or you want to try out different instances. So you want to see whether maybe that memory intensive workload would work better, maybe yeah. in kind of that R5 in instance. And that gives you that opportunity to see. And also, you know, maybe what you want to purchase. So truly we're entering this hybrid cloud model where yeah. you can't, um, the, the demand for high performance computing is so large yeah. that you've got to be able to burst to the cloud. I think you guys got it right. I'm really impressed and I like what I'm seeing. And I think you talked about earlier at the top of the interview, you know, government labs and whatnot. I think those are the early adopters um, because one, they need more power and they usually not, don't have a lot of big budgets. So they'll max out and then go to the cloud, whether it's, you know, computing, you know, what's going on in the ocean and climate change or all these things that they work on that need massive compute and power. That's a, um, a pretext to enterprise. So if you kind of connect the dots, you're, you're kind of right in line with what we're seeing. So uh, super impressive, thanks for uh, sharing that. Uh, final thoughts on this is that, you know, performance. So, okay, the next question is, okay, all great. You looking good off the tee or looking down the road, clear path to success in the future. How does the performance compare in the cloud versus on-premise? It could be, well, and that's one of the great things about the Intel Select solution because we have optimized that reference design so that you can get the performance you're used to on-prem in the AWS cloud. And so that is what's so um, cool, honestly, about mm. this opportunity. So we can help you know, that small and medium business that doesn't maybe have those resources or even those uh, industries that do, and they know they're already a using that modeling sim reference design and they can now just burst to the cloud and it will work with the performance they expect. Trish, great to have you on, great insight. Thanks for sharing all the great goodness from Intel and the AWS. Uh, final thoughts on the, on the partnership. We're not in person. And by the way, Intel usually has a huge presence. The booth is usually right behind the cube stage, uh, which you guys sponsor. Thank you very much. Great to always partner with you. Great party, you sponsor the replay, which is always great. And it's always great party and great partnership, good content. We're not there this year. What's the relationship like? Can you take a minute to explain your final thoughts on a, a, a Amazon Web Services and Intel? Yeah, no, we have a, a long-term partnership, 14 plus year partnership with AWS. And I mean, I think it's with the year, um, taking the Intel Select solution, it's going to be even a richer partnership we're going to have in the future. So I'm thrilled that I have the opportunity to talk about it and really um, talk about how excited I am to be able to bring more HBC into the world. It's all about the democratization of HBC because HBC changes the world. Well, Trish, congratulations on the select program with AWS and the first cloud service provider. Really is a nice directional indicator of what's going to happen. The future's laid out. Of course, Intel's in, in front. Thank you for coming on, appreciate it. No, oh, thank you, John. Okay, this is theCUBE's virtual coverage. CUBE virtual, we're not in person. AWS reInvent 2020 is virtual. Three weeks, we're over the next three weeks, we're going to bring you coverage, of course. CUBE live in studio in Palo Alto. We'll be covering a lot of the news. Stay with us for more coverage after this short break. Thank you.